Um, I'll start off. Today is the um, October 27th Budget Committee uh, meeting. Um, we'll start with a roll call. Um, Jessica Welsh appears to be absent. Um, Kim, I saw, so I know she's here. I think she's trying to make some copies. So. Angela's excused, Aaron is here, Lynn is here, Charlie George is here, Joe Dash is here, Michelle is here, Peter on Pieces is here, Pat Burski is not here yet. And I am here, and Denise is excused. Um, so the first item, so tonight we're doing two things. We're continuing the presentations, and we're going to do it at the library first, so you guys can get out. And then we'll, we'll do the um, third quarter budget review that we pushed off from last week. Thank you, John. So if you guys want to come up and... Do we want to wait for him to finish? She's She'll be two minutes. All right, we'll wait, we'll wait two minutes. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Anybody have any good stories to tell? <laughs> nice day. <laughs> yeah. Warm. Speaking of ground it's like ground dogs. Day day. This is the longest growing season in the history of weather keeping in the state of New Hampshire. No, really? Wow. Because we have not had a frost yet. Well, actually, that's true. We had a light frost the other day. Yes. Yeah, but I, I, I guess officially that there there is not been officially the frost that gets called by whoever wow. is the meteorologist who decides these things, and there's never been one this long. Wow. Well, it didn't kill off everything in the garden. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't that hard? Some of the spring things are blooming again. Yeah. I have strawberries. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Eat them. <laughs> no, I mean, I know what to do. Yeah. It's <laughs> a so, fun fact, not really a story, but. <laughs> that's, that's, that's acceptable. We'll take that. We'll remember that in a month. Right? Yeah. Bree's going to enter that into the notes. There you go. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Bree's the one. Yeah. We used to get a real deep freeze, right? Like several feet. We haven't had that in years, down deep in the frost line. Yeah, I mean, the design spec is four, four feet. It's, you know, water lines have to be below four feet to the frost line, so. Mm -hmm. The last few years, it's been 60 on Christmas. I mean, it's been so strange that we've had it so warm. Right. That late in the year. So. Oh. Sarah's not here, but Tim's here. I just printed the money, and I didn't need to print it. Well, you didn't tell me that. I was Thanks. touching Sarah tonight. <laughs> so you want me to sit here? Please. I'm assuming. Okay. Um, I am the, uh, I'm Cameron Nijikowski. I'm the chair of the Board of the Library Trustees. Um, I was actually the library director for, from the year the library opened, for the first eight years that the library was open. Um, and I will tell you that the budget and the way that the budget is done is much better than the way I ever did it. Um, so the form is pretty self-explanatory. I think you've gone through this already, or she before you once already, or no? No. Okay. All right. This left looks solid, I think. Um, <coughs> staffing uh, in parity with the town. So the select board voted, I think a week or so ago, to increase the um, increased salaries by 5% for town employees. And the library's always matched that for our staff as well. So we met this week to approve a 5% increase for our staff as well. Um, and that will account for the majority of the increase that you see in the library budget this year, just to, just to keep that parity with the town and the increase for uh, our employees as well. Um, 
I think this is important both for the town. I was pleased to see that the town uh, made that decision and for the library. Um, in my life and my job, <coughs> the great resignation that we've all been living through for the last year with people quitting, people changing jobs. There's been a lot of transition in the way people are choosing to work or not work, keeping qualified, skilled people who are dedicated and loyal to the job and doing a good job for the town and all those jobs. It's probably just as challenging in this world as it is in the private sector where I work. So I was really pleased to see that that happened. And um, you know, that's the main thing that's different. Um, our computers are quite aged at this point. Um, we're uh, waiting to hear back about a grant from the state to replace some of the computers. Um, the library adjusted really pretty well to what happened with COVID, and people have been very happy with the services that were offered through all those changes and iterations that we went through over the last year and how to keep adapting to be able to provide services to the people in the community. Um, so I would just say, if anyone has questions or things that you want to ask me about, I'll do my best to answer them for you. Uh, I, the one thing I will say about the 5% it is contingent on everybody having a job description and doing performance reviews. So everybody has to have a job description before they get their increases. So is that for the town perspective? Yeah, that's great. And the uh, library has actually done job descriptions and performance evaluations since the year Excellent. So there okay. is a standing record in the library of that from, from the very beginning. Um, and the job descriptions are reviewed annually and kinds of evaluations are kept in personal files. I just had a question about the <coughs> services. Um, at what point, there are two questions, um, when will you take donations again and when, um, um, when is your book sale, which is continual, but um, more upset? <laughs> Part of the issue with the donations and the book sale and kind of how that morphed over the years because if you remember in the beginning we were like we have nothing so bring everything and we got everything from you know the entire collection of National Geographic from you know 1890 when they began publishing it all the way to the current multiple times <laughs> and then when everybody went to DVDs from VHS guess what we got <laughs> moving crates full of everybody's VHS tapes because they didn't want to have to take them the transfer station, they got donated to the library, so we went through that. Then when everybody went to streaming services, we got all the DVDs, and we have quite a collection of DVDs. What's happened is the collection has really been refined and functions much more like a regular library, and we have very little storage space down there. Like, we have a tiny little closet to keep things. So the way the book sale has kind of evolved from that beginning where we were, we were willing to just use almost anything to even put in the collection, is I think they've gotten a little more particular about what they'll take. And people are sometimes not that selective about what they're bringing down. So we'll get like, oh, I'm gonna dump this drawer out of grandma's basement that is full of mouth poop and mold and take it to the library. <laughs> and we've, we've kind of tried to mitigate that a little bit. So. But it does, doesn't take donations at all. I can ask Sarah about that. Yeah, I can ask Sarah about that and see what that's all about. During COVID, it was to clean, but I think we could probably move forward on that now. Hi. Will you take a box of technical manuals? <laughs> we, we I've been trying to figure out where well, to them. Well, we can't resell them, and you know, people. What we have, for a while we had this great guy who would come in and he had, he had an app on his phone and he could do the uh, is the number on the book yeah. and tell the value of the book mm -hmm. and then he'd give us half and he'd take the books and we made a good amount of money from him donating to us because he had this you know this little side hustle going on in his life where he would sell books unfortunately he, he passed away this last year we don't have him there processing which may also be part of why but a lot of things that we think like you know those expensive textbooks that you paid you know, $300 for, well, the next year they change the foreword or something, and then they can charge you $300 again for the next edition, mm -hmm. and the other book is worth nothing. So a lot of the books we take are not necessarily to go in the book sale so other people will enjoy them, but we can sell them to earn money, and if they don't have value, we don't usually take them. So unfortunately, 
I know the transfer station has a sweet little library. Maybe someone down there would want to. <laughs> Sure they want to they have a, it's actually getting better. They have a nice little swamp going down there. It's kind of fun to see all that go on down there. I'll so. give it a try. Yeah. Uh, what's the Hoopla? Hoopla is an online streaming services for um, entertainment. So music, movies, uh, television shows. If you've noticed in the last I think COVID really like put the speed on this. A lot of people don't even have cable anymore. And if you have a library card, you can use Hoopla, you, 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 you sign up for Hoopla and all, you get access to all those materials for free through your library card. So you just log on and everything that you want to watch or see or do is for free. So if you do Hulu, Sling, or Peacock and you're paying for that, it would be worth maybe checking it out because a lot of what you like might be there and you would just do that with your library card. And Overdrive is the same thing, but it's for um, books. So you would do an e-book through Overdrive. And then there again, the same. If you do um, like a Kindle reader, or you download yeah. books from Amazon and you pay for them, well, you can go through Overdrive with your library card and get the exact same books for free on your Kindle the same way that you would. The only thing is they have a due date and you have to give them back, which is weird because it's digital and like, it's kind of weird. But, yeah. Oh, so, so I was going to say the workaround to that is because it takes me a lot of time on your Kindle, you just take it off the internet and it'll just stay there. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, then you can finish reading. Right, yeah. Record that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm not stealing it. I'm yeah. I'm a slow reader. Yeah. I'm going to take me a long time. <laughs> Too many words. <laughs> Do you have it blown up to like that huge text too, like mine, like my, you know, like three words on a line? I can't see anything. Kim, you had a question? So it looks like are you reducing um, staff hours? Like I'm looking at the library director, the assistant library, and the um, library assistant. What's the difference between an assistant librarian and a library? Oh, okay, got it, never mind. Um, but so it looks like you're reducing hours for the library assistant. Is that correct? Um, we had two people that you know we we kind of tailored the way the schedule for the employees worked out according to their schedules. One of them was actually getting a library science degree and was working at the Rochester Library, and we were really lucky to have someone with that level of skill and education working in our little library. She has gone on now to um, complete her degree and take a full-time job of a library position in the bigger library. So I think Sarah has adjusted those positions to reflect who the next person is that we've been able to bring in. We hired a woman that was uh, downtown in the, in the um, condos that everybody in town knows, and she's got a big personality and has a lot of connections in town. So she's bringing a whole other kind of value to the library now that we brought her in. So that, that shifts, the, the hours for those people shifts depending on who we have that can work and depending on their skills. <clears throat> no more tough questions? All right. Well, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. That was super easy. That was easy, yeah. <laughs> super easy. Thank you all so much, and thank you all for volunteering and doing such a good job. I know what that's like. <laughs> and it's very appreciated. So, have a great night. Thank you.
So far, well, actually, there's uh, still uh, the fall cleanup is still yet. We have, haven't been built for that, but I added it on in the I added the 10 markers. So I think there's one more, I believe, there's one more molding, which, which he does at the same time as the molding and it's part of the cleanup. You know. So we haven't expended all our, our money yet, because it's still a couple of things still out, but uh, I don't believe we'll be uh, using up the whole 19000 But So on the uh, 2022 budget, uh, I asked the, uh, the landscapers that been doing uh, our mowing and trimming and stuff, uh, uh, I asked him before, uh, you know, this fall, you know, the, before I went to budget, and I said, you know, are you still going to be on board? And, and, uh, so he gave us a, uh, he gave us a, uh, another price, and he'd gone up on the mowing, he went up on the cleanup. So uh, the other two trustees and myself uh, talked about it, and, uh, He discussed it and decided that uh, you know, he does a great job for us, uh, but you know, it's, it's just uh, he's gone up quite a bit. He went up uh, on the uh, on the spring uh, on the uh, spring cleanup. He went up uh, five hundred dollars, and on the fall cleanup, uh, I believe he went up seven hundred and fifty, I think, and then. Uh, on the mowing, he went up a hundred dollars per mowing. So we looked at that, and uh, so, uh, one of the trustees, Mike Michael Point, uh, was saying, you know, he, he says we're running into the same thing uh, where he works. You know, with dealing with uh, dealing with uh, contractors that are using fuel and stuff like that. You know, with fuel costs are, are up and. Uh, trouble getting people uh, to work for them and stuff. So he said, we probably should try to give them, uh, come to some kind of uh, uh, more money for them. So, mm -hmm. so what we did is we, uh, we went up on the, uh, uh, we went up on the, the uh, cleanup, and uh, not as much as they, he wanted, but, uh, we cut that down a little bit on the cleanup of what he wanted, and then we uh, went up on the hundred dollars per mowing. Uh, so that's why uh, we've come in at uh, uh, about eighteen thousand dollars for his, his mowing and cleanup, where it was uh, sixteen to fifty. So I. Uh, the rest of the budget, that's uh, about the same. So, anybody got any questions on anything? Uh, My recollection, Mark, is that this, the price that we've been getting has been a good, compared to others, has been a good price, right? I guess. Uh, you know, I, I haven't, uh, we haven't gone out to bid in the morning, probably. Uh, well, he's been doing it, I'd say he's been doing it for four years. And uh, I haven't gone off a bid only because uh, 
I'll, I'll tell you, we've, we've had our share of uh, landscapers from hell, you know. <laughs> and it's been kind of tough. Uh, you know, you don't, it's, it's hard to deal with, uh, with people when you got to get them there and, uh, you know, you got to tell them when to mow and everything. And with, with this guy, I, I don't have to be on him very much, you know. And uh, so that's worked out pretty well. And, uh, and I think the people uh, that visit the cemetery know that. I mean, I've, I've heard a lot of, you know, compliments. Uh, I mean, there was a little bit in the spring where he he was having some health problems in the spring, you know, uh, getting people to work for him. And, uh, he got a little behind uh, there, but... Uh, I've spoke to him about it, you know, that we, you know, we still got to kind of, you know, maintain what we got, you know, uh, so. And, and after that, he kind of uh, stayed up with it pretty good, so. Anybody have questions? Um, nice to park out. Thanks again for um, being so responsible with your budget, always well, responsible. I, I, we try to, but sometimes, sometimes it's just, it's, it's out of my hand, you know. Great. I have a question, Mark. What about the gravestone repair? Because I know every year that's been yeah. an issue, and I don't and, see and, any expenses. And, and I'll be honest with you, we didn't do anything this year. Uh, and any of the repairing I, that we've been doing, we've kind of been doing it ourselves, you know, uh, uh, trying to go in there and do a little volunteer stuff. Uh, if you get a one that's knocked right over, you know, you try to address it. This year, we really didn't uh, didn't get a chance to to do anything. Uh, and, and you know, if, if you get a bad frost year, a lot of them are tipping and, and stuff. Especially in uh, in Old Town, you know, you get a lot of uh, uh, you know no foundations on them on their stone, so they uh, you know they'll start tipping. Once they tip, you try to catch them before they. They go over because sometimes they'll break when they go over. But uh, it's hard to. I wish I could find somebody that that, that would do it. You know, uh, I had a couple of years ago. I called this one guy. Uh, I get his name at one of the cemetery meetings, and, and I called him, and I, he said, oh, "Yeah, I'll get back to you here next month." So was, yeah, you know, I think a lot of these guys are looking for the. Uh, you know, the jobs, like in the big cemeteries where they're going to be there for a while, you know. They're not looking for, uh, you know, just a couple of days' work, you know. So, I mean, if anybody ever knows of anybody that wants to do, I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science. All you, you got to do is, uh, you know, try to dig out and uh, straighten out some of them. Uh, like in Old Town, uh, the, the old graves, usually if you dig them, dig out the monument, you'll find there's a granite uh, uh, base. base that's cut out and the stone sits in the granite base and all that's done is tip. So what we do is we lift them up and uh, try to pack some gravel in there and level them off and that's about it. Uh, as far as the in uh, Newtown, uh, we don't have too many there because uh, they've got you get some pretty good solid uh, uh, concrete bases, and they usually go down pretty deep. But still, after uh, sometimes after a while, they start tipping, and you see some. I, I noticed even some of the, the new ones. You know, I, I don't know what it is, but I was talking to the monument guy. He says it. He says you. He says you never know. He says sometimes it's just. The way the, the sun's hitting on what side and, and uh, you know, the, the frost. And, uh, so from an education point of view, do we have open space in the cemetery? Yeah, we've got quite a bit of uh, we've got quite a bit of space. The only thing uh, ahead. Yeah, <laughs> we've Future got a reservation a few years ago we created a, a cremation area. Yeah. And uh, we haven't sold too much. I think we've sold maybe half a dozen lots there. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big area. Uh, 
as far as the uh, uh, like four graves and up, we've got a section for that. And there seems to be quite a bit of room there. The only thing we're getting low on now is the two grave section uh, because most of most of people are just buying two graves. So uh, that, that's been another problem. Uh, the front field there off on Silver Street I wanted to. Uh, called uh, maybe half a dozen um, surveyors, you know, uh, what we wanted to do is have it all laid out on a, on a blueprint, you know, the, the roads and the uh, lots and, 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 and get it all laid out and, and pinned. And uh, so I wanted, all I wanted was a price so I could come to the, yeah. to the town with a price here, yeah, this is what it's going to cost us to lay this out, and you know, this is what it's going to cost us to put the, the roads in. Uh, so this was two years ago. Last year, last spring, I, all these people, half of them didn't, didn't respond, some of them responded, said they're too busy. And, uh, I don't know what it is, but they don't want to do a cemetery or what. But, so this spring, I said, I'm going to go back, I never heard from them. Uh, Thank you, sir. Civil consultants in uh, South Berwick, uh, yeah, civil consultants. So I went over there and uh, I went in and I talked to the girl behind the desk and she says, Yeah, and so I, gave, I gave her all my information and, and I said, You know, I said, I just want to get a price for now so I can get this ball rolling. There. And uh, months go by and I don't hear a thing. So finally I got an email from her saying that, sorry, you know, we haven't got back to you, but we've been so busy with other stuff, uh, we, we just don't have the time right now. And so, uh, what, what I uh, came up with an idea, uh, there's another section you know, in the cemetery, uh, right next to the two graves section, where we can put two rows of uh, two grave lots. and. Uh, what we could do is, you know, we wouldn't have to have, we wouldn't have to put in a road yeah. because the road's already there yeah. alongside, so we'd run, and all we'd have to do is pin it and lay it out, and we could probably do that ourselves or, you know, it, uh, you know, just make sure that the pins, everything square and, and stuff. And so uh, I had emailed the, the other two trustees and I told them that uh, we could have a meeting on that side if we want to do that and that would buy us some time anyway so I mean we could get quite a few grades mm -hmm. in them two rows and that would take care of our two grade problem for a while so thank you so so that's where we're at with that but, Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate, appreciate all you do. It's really great. I don't know if I said it uh, officially, but we are putting off the rec committee because um, the representative is sick, and so I want to. They're willing to come in anyway, but I. Just have to to hey, take in, Mark. Yeah. So. Um, can give you a little bit of an update on where we are with that, if you want. Correct. But one thing, and actually, I was kind of hoping that um, some of us have a little feedback from the committee about this. Um, we've been talking with Celia. They requested a rec director position again this year, um, and I think originally she asked for that to be funded around fifteen thousand um, dollars. And there was a range of hours, somewhere between twelve and ten and twelve, I think at various hourly rates and and I think that was kind of like at the probably mid to high end for funding. Um, we we have we have some concerns about that, especially since we're still technically in COVID, um, about the um, the planning around that position. Um, so I would love to hear from the budget committee how they feel about bringing on a rec director. We had some discussion about that last year. Or well, I think before before COVID, that was the yeah. plan, and and now 
I guess the point you're making, Kent, is that it still seems to be up, up in the air a little bit as yeah. to how things are going to be. Well, do we? Are we going to have a program? Do we, we really don't need a director if we're That's not, not having a program. Right. And has that been decided yet? Well, that's one of the things that I uh, we kind of tested with is coming up with a more concrete plan for the director and the program. Um, I think she probably needs some help with that. Um, if, if if the committee decides um, and the select board decides to fund it, I think that she's going to need some direction. Um, and I don't want to say a business plan, but a more concrete plan about how this is going to work. Um, so, quite honestly, I, I'm on the fence. I don't know how Jack feels, but I, 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 I think we're all on the fence as a select board because, you know, um, the amount of students are down. Right. If you if you look at the schools, you know, you look at the COVID situation. They're talking about maybe doing a basketball thing in the winter. But does that mean they all have to wear masks? Are we going to have to do that? Does it make sense? We, we just don't know. You know and, and they want to put a director in to kind of lay this all out. I'm saying that ought to have some baseline. Lay it out first. Before you do it. Yeah. it this doesn't make sense to me. That's my personal opinion. I think they've also struggled with getting commitment um, on the committee itself, you know, yeah. getting people to um, volunteer for that committee. Um, so volunteer in general. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it used to be like a volunteer program, I think, my understanding is. But no, they don't have any volunteers. So does that make sense for us? Well, I think, you know, maybe someone else knows more because they have more history, but it, it does tend to pay for itself overall. Typically. Can't probably do this for sure. Can't probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but when you start bringing in a director, that's a new expense to me. To, that's right. That, that you're not you can't, have. yeah, it generates revenue. But if you look at the other programs they've got. Right. I don't think they've ever successfully had the other programs, have they? Like, yeah, they want than, a skating rink. Right. They want the basketball. But they, and, I don't and, know that that's been done yet to show whether it could even do revenue. Are they talking about a year round? Um, yes, yeah. and I, I, I look at it and we're challenged with salaries for our employees right now. Does that make sense for us to spend money that way? That trend. I think I like the idea of seeing more of a comprehensive plan, what they have in mind. That would be helpful before I did, making a determination. I did rec for years. I was one of the volunteers, and um, I. I would not be looking at a full-time director unless they have the rec actually functioning successfully. And they've had challenges, and I'm not saying they haven't, but then if you think, which I think they were at that point where they thought maybe they could grow it to be a little different, but I think we've taken a huge step back. If it had we'll momentum, if right, it had momentum. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that's really kind of where we're at, yeah. Yeah, so, oh, Aaron, what did you say? That enrollments were down 138? in the grade school and 134 in the middle and high school? 138 at the at the grade school is the current enrollment. Yeah. And I don't remember the exact number. For it was the, roughly the that. Actually, yeah. But yeah, I think that's about right. It's not down 138. Right. No, no, it's gone that's down to 200. I was going to say. Down 15 or so. But, but we don't know whether those kids have just left town or they're in some other school. So yeah. meanwhile, the school is a source for this. For this kind of a program, the other kids could be going to private school or home school, and you know, right. they would still be candidates for this. You know, as far as you know, is it the, you know what comes first? Do you get the overall program kicked off and then bring in the director? I mean, if the town wants to really make this as an offering for the for the kids and the family, the kind of director you bring in is going to be should be somebody who can take that from scratch and really drive it. Because we're where we are now because it's volunteers and they don't have enough time. They got all these other commitments. But if you want to say the town should have a rec program, then you got you do have to do some seed money for that to, to get it going. I think one of the other challenges like, is getting buy-in from the school to um, share resources for the program. I think there's going to need to be some sort of liaison or collaboration there to make it um, a, a more um, successful program. You mean like from a facility standpoint yeah. and stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They used to open up the school to yeah. the rec, and um, it's gotten less and less, yeah. I think. I mean, I've always, whenever I drive downtown, 
I see the field across, it's an American Legion field. And I mean, I look at it and I just say, you know what, that would be a great place for the town to work with the Legion, because it doesn't need a lot of work. But I mean, for the town to work with the Legion, to improve the field, somehow they work out the scheduling for it, and make it a, you know, I'm sure the Legion would love to have, I'm talking for them and I probably can't, but I mean, it could be a nice cooperative effort between the town and the Legion to get a piece of field. Because there aren't a lot of fields in town, right? You have the, the baseball field that's really cemetery land, I think. And who knows you know, what, what could do for that long term. So, and then you also have Sandy Bank. Because I think, if I understand it right, Sandy Bank is supposed to be done in conjunction with the Conservation Committee as well as the rec committee, I believe I have that. And so there's no rec committee, so nothing's happening. So, I mean, those are the kinds of things that having a, you know, a part-time director can kind of come in and focus on it to get the stuff done. I wish we knew more about the interest, you know, from, from residents and families. Yeah. Um, because I imagine that some of the local communities, um, Marshwood and maybe in some sort of have recreation programs that maybe they share with um, non-residents as well. Big <clears throat> yeah. yeah. The really? Big We've always done the, the GP. Oh, okay. GP. So would, does it make sense to have a program that is um, that has fees involved? To offer better... That's a philosophy. Um, better programs? <laughs> I was on the side, it used to be free for the, for the town, and there was a fee if they were out of town. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a long, long time. The gym teacher ran it, she, and it was a great program. And then um, she retired. And since then, it's been kind of, you know, the fees kept going up because nobody wants to volunteer. She, she would, you know, she had a stipend, but it was nothing compared to the time she put in. And I think we're just in that part of the, our culture where people just don't volunteer like they used to. It was all volunteer. All the, you know, the kids got paid a longer stipend. Parents all volunteered. Mm. Well, in all fairness, though, the COVID thing really did. has really yeah. changed the complexion right. of those kinds of programs. I mean, Absolutely. It definitely would add something to the community, mm -hmm. there's no question about it. And driven by volunteers is a nice concept, but I agree with what Joe said. If you really want to offer it as something that uh, is of value to the residents, we probably will at some time have to look at seating somebody to organize and start some programs and you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. So I think you could dovetail with volunteers if you have a leader who has the responsibility to do it. I'm just not convinced that this season, this, this budget series, is the right time to experiment with that, okay? Because there's just too many variables with what's going to happen in the summer. I mean, we don't have vaccinations approved yet although it's imminent, and then the rollout is questionable. How fast will that happen? So there will be a concern this summer by parents and responsible people <coughs> about whether or not, even though there's a need there for summer camp, whether or not to participate in it. So I think it's certainly something the select board is on the right track. I mean, you've got to evaluate what kind of a program could we roll out, and is this the right time to fund something like that? So I think it's going to take you know some people with energy to kind of pull a plan together, mm -hmm. um, and it, I don't feel like it. <clears throat> it can be just Celia. So I actually reached out to Kelly Anderson to see if she would be willing to volunteer a little bit of time because she's um, pretty active in sports and. Um, see you know she would maybe assist with putting together a plan i haven't heard back yet but i think the need is there i just don't know that the time is right but it did get a lot of use i mean my kids used it as well it's a nice thing to have 
I think there are some great ideas about you know, pickleball and stuff for seniors and all those types of things that, that are popular, but they're not going to be popular, I don't think, until COVID is. Right. I agree with that. So the one other, um, so most of the, her, the budget is um, Camp Raleigh, significant part of it, um, mostly self-funded, revenue generating. The other thing um, that is in her budget is um, a skating rink. Um, she's asking for us to fund the skating rink. I think it's sixty-two hundred dollars. I think sixty-two hundred. Yeah, so there was already some money in that line. Um, so. That was the only other ask. What, those two things were the major things. Was the rec director and um, where would the skating rink go? Oh, I think it's by the fire department. Where the baseball field is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the past, they've had a skating rink next to the fire department, between the baseball field and the fire department. Okay. So winter rec was funded at eight hundred dollars, and they've um, increased that to um, seven thousand, um, and asking to use that money for um, the skating rink. What would the I'm sorry, what would the money be used for? Because if I remember right, the fire department filled it, it froze, and parents shoveled it. That's a good question. Yeah. Okay. Um, probably some more permanent materials. I'm not I, sure. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Building up, having a regular skating rink. Yeah. That's what they want. And and city said they would forego that if they could get this uh, direct director. Yeah. So I mean. It, it, it's kind of all over the map. It's, we're out coming. Yeah, because outdoors would be more likely to have. Well, that's kind of the one thing that you can do. Right. During COVID, especially in the winter. Right. So that's the highlights. Um, let's say coming. Thanks, Ken. Any other any other questions related to the back? We we will invite them to come in and like we did to the police and, and fire, but um, our next meeting is until November 17th, I think. Um, maybe we can have them come in there and we can give direct feedback and we can all think about those two, think of the three big questions. Yep. Good. Well, it's really up to the select board, though. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, but it, it isn't because you have bottom line authority. So remember that part. So if you felt it wasn't appropriate, we'd actually like to know in advance um, because I feel like um, you know, the decision should be a little bit collaborative on this. It is, it is typically, you know, it is obviously uh, the authority of the select board to make decisions, but they do usually consider what the budget committee's, you know, preferences are. And so, bottom line authority would suggest the lines. Yeah, we might say, well, let's take $6,000 out of this because we don't really like the skating rink. Right. And, and uh, you can decide to fund the skating right. if you want. Right. As long as the bottom line is right. 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 You can make recommendations where it could be reduced, but... Right. So we would ask you to just think about it. Mm -hmm. okay. So the, the next item of business is to catch up what we deferred last week and just look at the uh, third quarter yep. uh, expenditures. Yes, so as I mentioned, um, because I, I just kind of fell into taking care of the, the budget um, worksheets, um, I can't go through line to line and give you all of the details of each. I um, can try to answer questions um, if there are any areas in particular um, that you have concerns about or questions about. So right now, I think overall the, the budget's in good shape. Like we don't have any concerns about being over budget at the end of the year. And I did get, um, I did get the updated total on the road resurfacing um, this week, and we're just about fully ex um, extended on that. Uh, I think today we're at the two hundred forty-five thousand dollars in roads and resurfacing. Um, that's the biggest line I don't have. So. There was one other thing um, um, that we that kind of came across, um, or I'll say across our desk, um, um, unexpectedly. I didn't know about it, 
um, was an issue with a with Douglas abatement. Um, so there was um, an issue where in 2019, um, we inadvertently billed them for their property taxes, even though they filed an abatement, and they paid about 245,000. That's, that's what it was. 245,000 when they shouldn't have. Um, so we're now. Um, Repaying it. Oh, no. Legally, we're legally bound. It, it, yeah. yeah. Better off never have to have had it than have to pay it back. That's exactly right. So, um, so we found out that um, it, it's about eighty-eight or eighty-nine thousand dollars. I'd have to back a look, but um, around eight thousand dollars for three years um, that we're paying them back. Um, it's bound by we have a legal contract with them, um, but it's not coming out of the operating budget. So. Um, it's coming out of um, the abatement line, so we shouldn't have an impact on um, the operating budget going forward, or this year. Could you explain the abatement line a little bit more, please? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I, I know. Okay. <laughs> well, That's all this thing. I think it's reserves that we have. It is, it is. It's reserves that we have. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's um, really Chuck, um, our finance person, can answer that question. Feel free to email if you want, Charlie, yeah, um, and ask the question. We'll make sure Chuck gets it. Because he went back and forth with the auditor training to determine where it should come out of and why. Um, I think we have like $2 million in reserve. I have. <laughs> that it would come out of that. But it doesn't come out of the operating money. I have the, the response. If you want to give me a minute, I can try to find it. If you're interested, I can try to find that. In the spirit of multitasking, any uh, ARPA, any more uh, guidance we're looking on ARPA? At, we're looking at that right now. In as fact, far as the police covering salaries? We're looking at that as we speak. Okay. That's Sorry, right. and, what, and, and we, the ARPA funds. What, what, what are we doing with that? We have about $270,000 out there. It can be used for roads. I think it can be used for police, and it can be used for fire, too. Or, uh, the temporary town administrator, we're asking him to look into that deeply for us as to how we can allocate those funds. And I think the thing we want to do is if there's things that we need to do for the police and fire, we do that before we do it for the um, water and sewer scenario because that has a bigger impact on yeah. the overall public. Right, and so Jack and I went out with the water and sewer department and looked at two projects with them. Um, one is um, a sewer replacement line on Pine Street, the other was um, a sewer line repair on Partridge. Um, one was about 80000 the other was about 200000 So we don't want to allocate all that money for that and then not have it for the other, so we're trying to figure out the other piece of it first. Yeah. And if there's money left over, because I believe it's a use it or lose it scenario over right. like three years. Yeah. Yep. So I think we want to use it, we just got to figure out how to appropriate it. Are we, uh, just a quick question, are, we, are there any open positions you're looking to fill mm -hmm. in the administration? Town administrator. Okay. Are you interested? Paul? I'm just asking. <laughs> I'll give you the job description right now. Uh, we just actually, uh, we just... Pain! We just received the job description um, from MRI. It, it was basically tailored um, off of what Caroline had left. And so uh, we'll, we'll be looking at that and getting that out shortly. I think what we're evaluating there, the town administrator and the bookkeeper, what role she do certain things. So we're kind of going through that right now because we think Chuck can do more of the financial aspect of it, which will free it up. And then we look at it and say, could the town administrator be part-time rather than be full-time? And, and does that make sense for us as, as a town? It's kind of what MRI indicated based on um, the conversations we've had with them and the meetings that we've had with them is um, they feel like, you know, we really need somebody who is um, more finance focused um, and potentially a part-time town administrator. I should probably know this, but what is this MRI? Um, Municipal Resources Incorporated. So we use them as well for the police chief position. Um, they did an assessment for that and then um, made a recommendation. Um, so they offer recruiting services as well as temporary services. Um, you know, town administration, finance, um, 
police. Right? Police, right, yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So uh, are you interested in hearing the response about the abatement? No? I did find it. Um, just, just know that it's, it comes out attributed to the abatement overlay expense line, and they're going to create a journal entry to, to offset the liability. So we won't see those um, in the budgets. Okay. It's deeper than that accounting wise, but as a follow up to that, at some point do we have to refund the right? Like is there what's the reserve level like we can take it out of there now, but is that something we're gonna like replenish or are we just saying no, we're good? Um that's a good question. I can't answer that question because I just kind of indicated we don't have to replenish. All right. Can you invest in Bitcoin? Yeah, it's investment. <laughs> it's investment. I don't know. Well it's you have to have a certain level. Well, no, we, we, I, think, yeah, I think they looked at the revenue levels and said we can afford this without impacting that. Because I think abatement, they also have, um, part of it comes from revenue. So obviously the, the money we took in was revenue. Um, so it's, it's really coming back out of revenue in a sense and not necessarily out of expense. I'm not an accountant. So. Cash yeah. Oh, actually, you should ask him because you're an accountant. Why don't you ask him, and next time we have this meeting, you can tell us. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Great idea. <laughs> can I ask a question? Are you, you going to go line by, you're not going line by line. Okay. Um, and this was probably, I don't know if George talked about this, but with sand and gravel, mm -hmm. Where it's so high, it's almost double. Which line is that? I'm sorry, I am on 194. And I'm just curious if that was like filling in a sinkhole or why oh nothing. Some of it's from paving projects, Michelle. They um, have been buying extra, so paving projects like road edging. Um, let's see. So, yes. Um, So yeah. George tried to address that and said, you know, that they were, that the staff helped out and that's how they got such a good bid for paving because they did some of the underwork. So obviously they probably needed materials to do that. So um, you saved a little bit. He said that we saved because they, yeah. the crew did did yes, that work, so they obviously had to have something to work with, so that's what I presumed it was. So. Okay. And cost is up some, um, and he also said, but I think the shed's full as well, so. Right, that was yeah. salt, I think he was talking about, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so interestingly, some of um, the money, um, and I've been talking to George about this, in that's being charged against road surfacing is really um, sand and gravel okay. money as that well. That's my question. Um, so, and it's so really sand and gravel is a little more overexpended than it reflects in here, probably. So, because George said that um, part of the, the road resurfacing bill had, wasn't separated out for sand and gravel. Other questions? I, I do just on the total, I don't, so not a specific one, but it's kind of, and I, I, I talked about this last year also. When we get, so we're, we're three quarters of the way through the, the, the budget year. And when you, when you annualize that three quarters up to, let's say, pretend it's going to be the same for the whole year, you come up with a number. And then when you compare that to the, the 2021 budget appropriation, there's a pretty decent under budgeting that occurred. I should say over budgeting, that there's excess. So when, when you do those numbers, when you annualize out the third quarter to the end of the year, and you, can, and you compare it to the budget amount for 2021, it works out to be $375,000 that's technically left over from the town's appropriation to what was really spent. So obviously that's excess money that the taxpayer paid in and something would be done with it. But it, it also comes down to when the thought being that when we do the budget for 2022, 
my point last year also was to start with the actuals for 2021 and then decide what to go. Mm -hmm. Because I, what, what, I, what we've seen happen is that people are starting with the 2021 budget amount, let's say, and, going, budget, up. and right. going up. When right. in right. fact, they should be starting with the, the actuals. actuals. Yeah. And, and then you can have a more realistic discussion about, well, your actuals for 2021 were going to be this. Do you think, you know, should we just do an inflation? I mean, right, it's going to be 5% next year. So at a minimum, should we do an inflation amount? And then do you have any other exceptional effort that you think is going to cause a bump up in it? And then kind of do that approach to budgeting. And I think what will happen if you do that, you're going to get a single year for 2022 that everybody's going to be happy because your budget drops significantly. But to me, it's a more realistic baseline to start from. So, so just as, you know, and I think when we talked about it last year, might have you know the, the, the departments had started the budgets and stuff, but it was something we wanted to think about. And I'm just putting it out there as a suggestion for the 2022 budget: start with actuals, decide what it should be increased by, and then that then make that, and then you can almost say, okay, well this is what we think it is, but then we should have a line item that says. Well, we, we should put some percentage as part of a unexpected stuff that could come on, just so you have some fudge to play around. Contingency, I think. Contingency, yeah. yeah. So that's just my suggestion on, on how we move into the budget process for 2022 from a department perspective. So um, when you, I heard that that was your approach for reducing it pretty significantly last year. Um, I took the time to go through line by line and look at back to 2017 to see um, what the expenditures were. Mm -hmm. And so when we first were handed this budget, it was about $211,000 over last year's appropriated budget. It was about a 9% increase. Mm -hmm. um, so between the, the select board and me kind of going through line by line to see where we really need, um, where we can stay the same, where we can reduce, having looked back at, you know, the History. prior three, four yep. years, um, we were able to get the budget down um, in most departments um, using your approach mm -hmm. um, to where we're now at 1.63% increase over last year, um, or an increase of about 40, 40. Just to clarify something about what we did last year. 40. I think what we, we, we said is, look, each year you're under budgeting, you're over budgeting by six or seven percent. I can't remember. Yeah, it was, it was like nine percent or so. And so we, we we didn't actually go to to the actuals and take nine right. percent or whatever. We went back to say, typically you're six or seven percent over. We we believe you're going with the same process. This time we're going to drop. Just take three percent out because you're probably still going to be over. I mean, if, if you follow. Right. This is a little different in that we're digging into actuals, mm -hmm. um, which I, I, I actually like that approach. Yeah, I mean, I just, it, it's, I think, it, I mean, it, it gives you that big bump and then you're, I mean, it's a one year save or perceived savings, but I think it just makes it a little bit easier. I think by doing actuals, you are challenging the department heads a little more to say, okay, you did this, gonna do a basic inflation adjustment, you know, they almost what other to, projects do you What else there? do you think is going to be above and beyond this year? Is it a temporary bump or is it a permanent one as far as you should, we should adjust that? And so it almost becomes the, the actuals plus, uh, plus the inflationary number plus your bump up, mm -hmm. and that becomes your budget. And then, and then you have the detail about how they came up with those numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, so I, I think you know, the budget where we're at now, so it's 40000 Dollars over last year for um, At the, of the actuals or the budget, the um, budget, budget. Yeah, it's, budget. it's over the appropriation. Yeah, see, because I mean, when when I do the numbers for 2022, it's it's 300. I mean, we we will basically, if, if everything stays consistent, but you can take a haircut on that too. But we're going to be basically underspending by 375 thousand dollars against actuals. Okay. So. Um, and that's from 2021? That would be taking the actuals for yeah. oh, three quarters. Yeah. And then forecasting the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter of the fourth yeah. quarter, right. Forecasting the fourth quarter. 
and then um, and the question is, is, do, is what we have here really three quarters? Because sometimes right. well, in past right. they've been right. like some. A lot of stuff happens in the fourth quarter. Right. Yeah, exactly. right. I mean that, yeah. that's that's a challenge, and, that, and that's in any business and. And right, but if to what you said, Kim, you went back and if you look, and I did the same thing. If you go back and you look at the, the 2019 or the 2020, mm -hmm. it's pretty consistent. Yes. You know, it was the same percentage across all those years about actuals compared to year end, right. actual year end compared to the budget adopted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, no, it'll be interesting to kind of see where we, you know, where we land, because. Um, Really, the forty thousand dollars that is increased is really mostly market adjustments, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Yeah. Um, and, and everything else pretty much remained flat and sometimes under. Like so, we actually reduced Huge. some of the lines that were underexpended. Um, so Monday night we have we're hoping to be one of the final um, budget workshops. Once we get those adjustments, and I'm happy to share the budget with everybody. And Joe, if you want to take a look um, and kind of see if it is in line with what you are thinking and what your numbers are, I'd be happy to hear about that. Sure. Because um, there were definitely line items that were never spent, we haven't spent for years. And so I made reductions there, not complete reductions, mm -hmm. but partial reductions. Um, so yeah, it was a line by line um, review for sure. It would okay. be really helpful, I think, when you guys get the budget to share, if even if you have to make it into an Excel that's not, you know, linked to tons of things, mm -hmm. but it'd be helpful in Excel just because otherwise I'm going to convert, convert it, and that's a pain in the butt. Um, well, uh, for years I've asked for that, and Caroline begrudgingly gave finally gave it up um, uh, when I came on the select board. And the concern, and it's a valid one, is that you don't know what copy is accurate after a while. Everybody has the ability to change this. Although I think I can protect the spreadsheet, um, so it is read-only. You can password protect, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah but I think it's, I mean, that that to me is, somebody's the master and there's copies yeah, yeah. out there. So nobody, you can make all the changes you want, but in no cases should anything I do be right. passed up and, and tell right. you the select board, replace what you got. That, that doesn't work. Yeah. That's why we're doing versions. Yes. Yep. Um, so I don't, I'm not adverse to sharing it on password protected. It. It's nice because it's so much easier to look and manipulate and numbers. And analyze and, it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I think it's good. Yeah. yeah. The more eyes that are on this, the better on for us, mm -hmm. to be honest. So, um, so again, pretty much the increase that you're seeing is really mostly focused on salaries. Um, and that's been a challenge for us because we've gotten a lot of different requests for salary adjustments. Um, so I think we're kind of working through that now. Does this board have any input on what they think is a reasonable adjustment for the employees? I mean, the employees give justification for based on, you know, the, what the market is bearing, correct? Mm -hmm. Or do we do that? Well, I think we're more likely to, uh, well, I think we're focused on keeping the employees happy but being responsible to the residents and taxpayers as well. Yeah, right, you know, exactly. That's the challenge because we want to keep employees, um, but we also can't ask for some of the, the, the chunks that people right. have asked for this year. I don't think we can put that burden on, on the residents, not all in one bite. Well, That's my own personal. We've been behind for a number of years, though. So at some point in time, yeah. we have to pony up and, and say, okay, this is what it looks like right now. Next year, we may, may not be able to do anything. But this is what it looks like right now. We gave it a fair shot, and here's where we are. Um, I don't think we can kick the can, is what I'm trying to say. I mean, basically, we, we, we're sticking with a percentage, but there's some outliers, mm -hmm. you know, as individuals that are going to exceed that. <coughs> well, which makes sense. they made their arguments. You have to decide whether or not uh, they're and they all, and they, all, they all have arguments. I mean, yep. you, you look at the market data, you look at inflation, you look at everything that's out there, 
you know, it, it, it's difficult. But we also need to look at what are our revenues and what do we have in the, in the town. Okay. And revenues down. Um, everybody got the revenue information um, questions about that. It's about one, yeah. one minor question, just because I saw it in your spreadsheet, I don't really have a track of that. But we get revenue from a contract we have with cable company. And we've had that revenue, it looks like, for a number of years. I understand there's a contract that is yet to be negotiated for a re-up. And I just wonder whether or not the select board is taking into account the fact that internet has become a bigger priority in, our, in all communities and also has been um, supplemented with federal grants for these companies. Uh, we definitely are under service in Rollins for, for internet. Uh, we have so many <coughs> rural connections and uh, people cannot afford the uh, hookup fee that's charged for it. Now I know there's new technology out now, you know, we have 5G, which isn't really helping us in Rollinsford because we don't really have 5G in Rollinsford, but uh, which is a wireless way of connecting on the internet. But cabling on, for the town um, should have a better uh, a better network, and uh, I'd like to see the select board look at that contract a little more uh, closely before we sign up, regardless of what the revenue situation is, because I know that, that the government is helping to build that infrastructure, and uh, there are in place already uh, incentives for the cable company to extend service that have come out of this COVID thing, but if we're re-upping with them for the next five or ten years, I don't know how long the contract is, I just would like to see uh, more diligence on that. Mm -hmm. I think we've been on the same contract since 1971. Well, so. yeah. Probably, I I, and I think it's been on their radar for a really long time. And it's, that's, so what we're hoping with the new town administrator is to focus on some of those high-level projects that really need attention. Very good. Just thought I'd mention it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the revenue looks good compared to what it was forecasted. <laughs> uh, are you being facetious? Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> <Okay>. um, <coughs> great. Yeah, so we're, um, so motor vehicles down almost $200,000. Wow. Um, Is that buses? Uh, Is that buses again? No, no, no. no it's just oh, that, regular no, motor vehicles. It's regular motor vehicles. Mm -hmm. I think because the town hall was closed for the People time. gave up? Well, they can go other places now. They can go to other, you know, Portsmouth, I think, got a lot of business. Um, this, you can go to the state, so they oh, just you found, can register we, somewhere else. They found other avenues, yeah. Um, <coughs> How does that work? I don't really yeah. think that's that's the explanation. Though. How can they do that? They that's not realistic to 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 say that much revenue with displacement like that. Well, but that's not the only reason for sure. Yeah, I um, thought the big part was when C and J kind of really seriously cut back their plus uh, yeah. traffic, that that was the impact for it it They registered a lot fewer buses yeah. than they right. had before. Mm -hmm. Is CNJ running out of Dover yet again? That was still not no, running. they are now. They yeah. are now. Yeah. Oh, they are? So they maybe we'll see uh, a phone. I only know this because I was driving my son to the, and he wasn't looking anymore on 236, and he said, why aren't we going to Dover? And I'm like, it's not open. Said, yeah, it is. No. <laughs> That's where my ticket's from. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, the other thing is is the type of cars that people are buying. Um, just because of inventory shortages is probably an impact as well. If you can find yeah, I think oh, sales are down, buy. yeah. Okay. So yeah. Less transactions, less less expensive cars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So you got, um, and the last time I provided it, you got a little more detail out of um, the revenue lines. So some of those pages were um, different sheets um, that were in the spreadsheet, the revenue spreadsheet, but not necessarily provided to you. But it gives you a little bit more detail, um, like licensing and permits. And, um, so you, you've got pretty much all the detail we have about revenue. Just curious, as the Bear Road property that was purchased, are they planning a development in there? It's one uh, residential house. One? Mm -hmm. For that big piece of property? Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. Yeah, I saw the plan for it. Pretty nice. Pretty cool. <laughs> nice house? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same. It's the guy who donated the Paul. It is the Paul. Peter Paul. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, I actually heard that. It's that. really expensive building at UNH. UNH, yeah. beautiful building that he donated to. The business school? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's oh, great. We don't have to put it in the trust. <laughs> well, um, the other property that just sold I heard was um, Oak Street, Janitas on Oak Street. That parcel sold as well, I think. On um, LA off Atlantic Avenue? Um, in Dover? Right on the corner of, um, was it 103, 101 in Oak Street in Dover by the old armory? Mm -hmm. Across the street. Yeah. 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 That process is really recently. Um, so. But it's part Dover, part Rollins, for example. Is it? Isn't much of an impact. Yeah. That's what I heard. That's a lot of wetland in there. That's huge. And this is a John Costas. Yeah. My cousins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you didn't know that, Peter? I knew it was for sale. I didn't know it sold. It did. What's so. the surveying on Roberts Road? Of the big beautiful uh, Yeah, he's he's doing some estate planning. There's nothing that's going to happen. Okay. Here. I'm like, that would break my heart. Yeah. Oh, that impression. Piece, big piece of land? Yeah. Oh, that would be. Uh, stone. Um, we'll have to put it in conservation. Oh, it'll be. Yeah. Todd. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, it's getting on to, to, to close to 8 o'clock. Um, yeah. Any other questions about the yeah, um, okay, end of Q3 budget? Are the line items that, that you guys, so, so the, the approach that Joe presented where we look at actuals and add-ons, what we should be doing through this review process is saying, okay, what's different? Like what, what wouldn't be just a normal percentage increase? And, and um, I'm not sure if her that yet, but we can. We have another option, another planning, you know, work, workshop on this that we can talk about that. But I think that would be helpful just to mm -hmm. a get the Excel version that we can all play with, and mm -hmm. and b sort of all right. These are the items that we think are going to be different, either lower or higher, because of whatever reason. Um, one of the things that uh, so we only have a few open things left before um, we're ready to share this. Um, one of them is insurances. We don't have rates don't have on rates. that. So we're trying to get some early um, quotes rates <laughs> yeah, about that because uh, although I've heard people say that the rates went down this year, um, I'm not that optimistic about our rates. You're and talking then, about health insurance? or, or um, Health, insurance? workers' comp, liability. Um, Employment. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep, so that's still open. Um, it, so we have to resolve the recreation department issues, and then who's going to pay? I know. I think we're pretty close. I, I think in the hopefully in this next workshop we'll have something what we consider pretty close to final. All right. Okay. Well, with that, I think that concludes our quarterly review for now. Um, the next meeting is on November 17th on schedule. Do we have any other business anybody would like to bring up? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. A second? A second. A second from Lynn. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed?
Thank you. Well, let's take it. So, that's a holy way for that to happen.